Ring SM is a 14 HP wide module in Eurorack format. It's available with either a black or a silver front panel. It's essentially four modules in one. A five channel audio mixer, a distortion unit, a ring modulator and a sub bass generator. It's hugely versatile because all the elements can be combined. The ring modulation and two separate sub basses can all be used together. The ring modulator is based on that from the original EMS VCS3 synthesizer, but with many added features and it uses discrete matched transistor circuitry. And because of its discrete transistor core, you can get some very nice sounds when the inputs are overdriven. The two superb sounding sub bass generators output shaped sine waves, which are designed to have low harmonic content so that they sit very well in the mix. They have very fast and accurate tracking and will extend well up into the audio range. The mixer element is based on the original and great sounding CP3 discrete transistor mixer design from the 1960s Moog 900 series modular systems. Because it is DC coupled, it can be used for both audio and for control voltages. This is a module out of the box and has the profile, nice and slim. And at the bottom, this is the power connector and the bottom two pins are for the minus 12 volt rail. In order to connect the cable, you'll find that there's a red stripe on the bottom and that corresponds with the minus 12 volt rail. So just make sure that those two, are, two elements are aligned. And the same applies when installing the, the module into the, the bus board. So make sure the red stripe on the bottom of the cable lines up with a minus 12 volt rail, which should be marked somewhere on the on the bus board or you might have a, a shrouded connector but here it's at the bottom they're the minus 12 volt pins so that slides on easily and same on the module Taking a look at the mixer section first, because it takes precedence over the other elements of the module. The ring modulator and the sub oscillator generators are, are normaled into the mixer so they can be combined in, into the single output. But if anything is plugged into any of these inputs, then it will disconnect either the ring modulator or the, the sub oscillator, depending on what input you're using. So as a result, if you used to connect, say, five oscillators or audio signals into all of these five inputs, then you wouldn't be able to use the, the ring modulator or the, or the sub-oscillator generators. However, there's not often going to be an occasion where you're going to want to mix as many as five signals together. More commonly, you're just going to want to mix a couple of things, and in which case, depending on whereabouts you patch your incoming audio or, or VCOs to will determine what functions you can use alongside it. So this is effectively a, a really flexible system. If you're using this just as a mixer, then these six pots constitute the mixer section. If you notice that on each of these numbers, there's a black number on a white background, and that's to deliberately make a distinction between the number this corresponds to just purely as an attenuator for each of these these inputs like this one would raise the level of input one for example but also its alternative function so in this case this would otherwise be the ring modulator level so if you connect something at input one that would disable the ring modulator because you're you're basically cancelling out its its level control and the same would be true with the, the sub oscillators. If you plug something into input four, then that will disable the minus one octave sub oscillator over here. It would just be 
that would just become the attenuator for that channel. But then because you've got five input channels, which is a lot, then you can choose what input channels that you use based on what other functions in the module that you want to use simultaneously. I'll go into detail about how this affects the individual elements of the module later on when I start making sounds with them. But for the time being, let's just say you wanted to mix a couple of signals and then add the two sub oscillators. Well, since these are hardwired to four and five, all we'd need to do is make sure that you free up inputs four and five, which will give you inputs one, two, and three to mix your other signals. And then these would simply be your attenuators for raising the levels of of those signals. And then as you raise these, you'd be adding the sub oscillators, you know, minus one and minus two octave to the overall output. Also, if you want to use the mixer for control voltages, then you just have to make sure that the ring modulator and sub oscillator controls are all down so that it's, otherwise you'd be adding audio to the, the CV signal at the, at the output. Because this is essentially a CP3 mixer, it's also a very effective distortion unit. As individual channels or, or mix of channels are, are taken over their, their threshold level, hard distortion is added to the signal. And this also acts as a limiter, so anything further downstream or down the audio chain from the from the mixer, such as a, a filter for example, isn't receiving a, a signal that's 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 too loud for its input. For channels one to four, ordinarily you'd have to drive the, the channels over the threshold level in order to to push the unit into into hard distortion. Except for input five Input 5 has a significantly higher gain level than the other channels and that's so that you can use just a, a single signal and drive it hard enough to push the unit into hard distortion. And it's made easy to remember that that's this, what this channel does is you've got a plus sign next to the input and on the, the number for the pot. The mixer is DC coupled so applying a positive or negative DC bias to any of the of the mixer channels will cause the offset to be added to any of the waveforms coming in through the, the mixer inputs. So it will shift the waveform up or down from zero so that you can achieve positive or, or negative asymmetric clipping. And so as the signal is pushed beyond its positive or negative headroom, the shape of the waveform will be clipped I've got a very simple patch here set up to illustrate this. The Sonic XV is generating a sine wave, it's, it's self oscillating and then the output I'm just connecting into the channel 1 of the, the VCA so you can hear it. And it's also going into the oscilloscope which you can see is the yellow line at the top. And simultaneously I've also got the output from that going into input 5 on the Ring SM and then the output from the Ring SM also going into the other channel on the VCA so that you can hear the difference. So if I raise the level of, of that and take out the, the direct signal from the Sonic XV, you can hear from the Ring SM it sounds the same, it's, you know, it's a sine wave. So the CV mix module over here provides a, a constant variable voltage that you can use as a bias and the control for it here is is bipolar so I can add either a, a positive or a, a negative voltage to the to the input here and as I add that that voltage will be applied to the waveform coming in on input 5 so if I had a, a positive voltage, it will start to push the, the position of the, the waveform upwards until eventually it can go no further. And then the top of the waveform will, be, will start to be cut off. It's, there's hard clipping where it's just basically cutting off the top of the waveform. And then if I apply a negative voltage, the opposite will be true. It will eventually get to a point where it can go no further and it will start to cut off the bomb. So if, if you look at the, the oscilloscope, I'll show you that visually. 
and you'll hear the difference as well in the in the output coming from the Ring SM. The, the character of the waveform will change. So this is adding positive bias. So you can see the change in the shape, but also the extra harmonic content that's added. And then the same if I go the other way into into negative. The three pots up the top relate purely to the ring modulator. If you're familiar with ring modulators, they involve a carrier signal and a modulator. The X control here controls the level that is coming in through this input, and, and that is the carrier signal. And similarly, Y controls the, the level of the Y input, and this serves as the, the modulator. But unusually, this has also got a third element in Z, which has also got an input and an attenuator. And this has a slightly different phase relationship with the ring modulator. So it produces a, a slightly more resonant sound, but you can use both of these together. So you can effectively have one carrier and, and two modulators. Because you need the modulators in order to produce the ring modulated sound, if you've got something plugged into X and nothing plugged into to Y or Z, then you, normally you just get silence because you need both the carrier and the modulator to, to generate an output. However, when the double switch is in a down position, the carrier signal X is connected to the modulated signal of Y. And if a sine wave or a, a triangle wave is, is connected to the X input, it will produce a, a sound, a waveform from the output that's double the frequency of the input. So effectively an octave higher. And this ring modulator level, because you've not got anything plugged into to Y and Z, this then becomes the level control of, of that effect. So it works in the same way, actually, as the, the sub oscillators, because the sub oscillators also generate their their pitches from from this, the waveform that's plugged into to X. So these three pots control the level of the ring modulator elements, providing nothing is connected to their relevant inputs, like one, two, or three. This one controls the level of ring modulation. So however you've got the, the ring modulator behaving up here, you'll hear the results of that coming through this this ring mod pot. This will basically add this to the, the output of the mixer. X will actually introduce whatever the, the signal is that's coming in into X as your carrier signal. This pot, providing nothing is plugged into input two, this will add that incoming signal to the mix. So let's say you've got ring modulator level up, so you're, you're hearing the results of of what you've got going into X and Y and perhaps even Z, and this will be outputting the the result of that. But this will also introduce the original signal in addition to the ring modulated effect. And same with Y, uh, it will also introduce whatever you've got connected to Y, you'll just basically get the, the dry signal of that being introduced into the mix, in addition to, to the ring modulation effect. So you can have two ring modulated frequencies, which are the, the sum and, and difference of the X and Y inputs, but also because of these pots that allow you to introduce the original the original signals which will have their own frequencies intact it means you can essentially have up to four different frequencies instead of just two and because of its discrete transistor core you can get some really nice sounds if you overdrive the inputs the two sub oscillators on the ring sm are very fast and stable tracking they work best with simple waveforms such as saws and square waves and triangles, etc. But can work with more complex waveforms too. 
but they won't work with very noisy waveforms or waveforms with multiple frequencies. I produce two separate sub octaves from the signal that's present in the, the X input here. And as you might have guessed, sub minus one produces a signal that's one octave below the signal coming into the X input, provided no input is present at the number four jack, in which case the sub oscillator is passed into the channel four of the mixer. And sub minus two is the same again, but minus two octaves below whatever it is that's, that's input into X. And again, providing nothing is plugged into input five, that is passed into channel five of the mixer. Both of the sub-octave generators generate shaped sine waves as opposed to square waves, which are more commonly used in, for this purpose. You think of certain famous synthesizers of the past that have sub-octave functions, they're, they're generally square waves. And these shaped sine waves are much better because they have much lower harmonic content, so they sit much better in a mix and they don't swamp or muddy the, the mid-range in the same way that square wave sub-octaves often can. The output of the sub-octave generators isn't dependent on the wave shape that's coming into the X input. So irrespective of what goes into X, a triangle or a sawtooth or whatever, you'll get the same shaped sine waves as, as the output. It's also important to bear in mind that the sub-octaves are not just for basses, although it might be tempted to just simply think of them as something to put more bottom end on the sound. They extend well up into the audio range, so you can use them just to add thickness to a, a lead sound at a, quite a high, a high pitch level. So they're very versatile in that respect. Probably the most familiar usage of a ring modulator is with two VCOs. So I'll start off by taking a triangle wave and connecting that to X, which is the carrier signal and then I'm going to take another triangle and connect that to the Y input which is the first of the two modulators and just so you can hear what they sound like this is the carrier signal and then at exactly the same pitch because I've already tuned them together this is the, the second oscillator I'll turn the first one down that's what's going into the modulator but then if I raise the, the ring modulated result of those two oscillators, you hear that sound significantly different than what's actually going into it, which is this. And that's just by changing the, the modulator VCO by two octaves, same pitch but two octaves up, and it's created all those additional frequencies that, that weren't there to begin with basically. I'll raise the original dry signals, so already that's created a, a pretty complex sound. I'll take the dry signals down, and then I'll add a, a third VCO to the other modulator which is Z and raise that and experiment with different pitches But where you hear the biggest difference is when you start to change the pitch of the of the VCOs in them, or in just in intervals or semitones or just just fractions. So I'll start off by taking out the second modulator and listen what happens when I just gradually change the, the frequency of either the modulator or the or the carrier.
Well, now I'm going to take the envelope generator and add it to the CV coming from the keyboard so that I can create descending pitches which are again triggered by the keyboard. So I'm going into the CV mix. I've already set this up by adjusting the, the attenuator for what I've got being mixed together but also using the offset and to, to adjust it. And just to make it a bit more interesting, I'm going to add an LFO to the pitch of this VCO. And also the second VCO. So going back to the original sound. The remodulator is intended to work with sine waves or triangle waves, but not with square waves or with sawtooth for that matter. But electronic music is all about experimentation. So you might find that using something not in the way that it was intended produces some interesting musical or useful results in some way. So just for the sake of this, I'm going to try this with some sawtooths, uh, just as a single modulator setup. And I really like that already, that sounds really gnarly. And then even with the shark tooth, which is a, a softer sounding wave shape, and produces a sound that's a little bit more, a little bit more triangular than a, a normal sawtooth. And then just for the hell of it, a couple of square waves. the least useful um, musical out of the possible wave shapes but who knows uh, if you experiment with something long enough you often find it doing something that you like even if you're not sure why For this patch I'm using the two filters on the Gemini to generate two sine waves. The two individual filters and they're both self oscillating basically. And I've got the output of one going into the carrier and one as a modulator. But before I do that this is just the sound of the of the sine waves coming from the filter and this is the one that's going into the carrier. And then this is the one just at random detuning going into the modulator. Now that's just the sound of the of the two filters self oscillating together, but if I feed that through the ring modulator, I'll raise the level of it. So that's the ring modulated combination of both of those sine waves. And you can still raise the 
level of the individual signals. to try that same crazy effect from earlier on. The sub bass generators on the Ring SM rely on an oscillator to feed it a waveform from which it will generate the sub octaves. And generally speaking, you'd use a, a sine or a, a triangle wave or even a sawtooth just for the, the minus one and minus two sub octaves. But along with the, the double effects, which requires a, either a sine wave or a, a triangle wave specifically. You can basically use one VCO to generate four octaves in total, which means you can get a huge sound out of just one oscillator. So starting with just patching a, a triangle wave into the X input, and it's upon that input that the sub oscillators are dependent. I haven't got any audio at the moment because I've got all the levels down, but if I start to raise the X mix, pot then that will introduce the the triangle wave from the oscillator and then I'll raise the sub minus one so yes minus one octave then raise sub minus two so just from one VCO already you've got three octaves which is a, a much bigger sound than what you'd have with just the VCO on its own but it can also go a bit further than that like at the moment if I've put the double switch down and make sure the raise the ring modulator because it's it's dependent on a ring modulator function and then raise the X input so that's giving you four octaves from just one triangle wave from a single oscillator so if I start changing the, the pitch of the notes down an octave, down two octaves. So already that sounds very warm and, and, and fat and it can sound really big, especially if you're going to start distorting the levels as well.
just take out the original signal altogether. So now all you're hearing is just, just what the ring SM is generating from that VCO, and this is the distorted sound. And if I clean it up a bit. take out the double that's just the two sub oscillators the lowest one on its own and then just the minus one on its own so this sounds great but perhaps you might want something a little bit more interesting going on in the middle of the sound so you know, if, if you wanted a, a square wave with all the with pulse width modulation for example then first of all you've got to consider the the inputs if you're using the sub oscillator generator then if you want to use both sub oscillators both inputs four and five have kind of been pinched and have been stolen by the the, the sub oscillators so you've that limits what inputs you can use and also if you're using the the double function then that also takes one out of the equation but it still leaves you with three which is totally unused so you're probably not going to want to pile too many oscillators on top of all these these sub oscillators and uh, and just end up completely muddy in the sound beyond recognition but you can also use the, the second input as well but I'll come back to that I'll start by just from the same oscillator taking its square wave I'll take the, the triangle out for the time being and then putting this into input 3 So there you can hear a square wave, it's got a bit more bite to it, so it's, it's a lot more audible than just a triangle wave, it, it distinguishes itself more from the, the sub, -oscill the sub oscillators and the sound. But to make that sound more interesting then I can add some pulse width modulation to it. So it's like a triangle wave from the LFO. But then, like I was saying, X is just introducing the original triangle wave, which you're not really going to hear much of once you've got the, the square wave patched into it as well. So you can you can do without that. If you turn its volume down, you can still you're still getting the same sound, but basically you're freeing up the second input because all this is really doing is controlling the the level of of the the original signal in the mix it's not actually disabling the the X input which is the sound that's coming into it so that means you can take another VCO or even another waveform from the same VCO and patch it into the input number two you see I've connected to input number two and everything still sounds the same and I'll raise its level and you'll hear the, the second oscillator The sub bass generators on the Ring SM generate shaped sine waves. And to illustrate this, I've got an oscillator connected to the, the oscilloscope. 
so you can see just the triangle wave coming directly from the, the VCO and I've got this running through multiples so that it's going directly into the oscilloscope in the top channel with a, in yellow but also the output of the ring SM is going to the bottom channel in blue which you can't see at the moment because I've got the level of the sub oscillator down now what you, what you can hear is the audio from the from the original oscillator just this, this triangle wave so if I raise the level of the, the minus one sub oscillator you'll see the, the waveform start to appear at the bottom in blue so you can see that's like almost square wave like uh, this sort of pitch but all the edges of the, the waveform are smoothed off and then as you raise pitch that shape will change and become a bit more accentuated and it produces this waveform irrespective of what is connected to the, the X input so if I take the triangle wave out now and then just connect it to a sawtooth you can still hear it and see it's producing exactly the same waveform and the same again with shark tooth so really whatever wave shape you put in it will produce that same result but as far as tracking is concerned you're going to get better results when it's a couple with something like a, a triangle and the same is true of the minus two sub octave if I raise that You can see now there's twice the interval between the peaks and troughs on the waveform and the bottom channel because it's another octave down and the speed has been halved. And then as I raise the octave of the oscillator. So you can see how it's created that really smooth wave shape which just makes it better for, for bases. It, it, it means you've got less of those sort of rough, edgy harmonics that would just muddy up the sound. It gives you greater separation. So just like the, the channels on the mixer, when you raise the levels beyond their threshold, you start to get distortion, and then the wave shape is is changed. You start to get clipping occurring on the on the incoming waves, it's the same with the sub oscillator so if I push this up and eventually as it goes beyond its threshold you see the clipping appear at the peaks and troughs of the waveform you can hear it too where it's flattening it, it's creating more harmonic content and same on the minus two When used as a mixer, the Ring SM has five separate inputs that allows you to mix together five different sources. I'm going to use this as an audio mixer first of all, and I'm going to start off by just patching some pink noise from the gliding noise module into channel one, and then raise the volume. And then I'll blend in some sawtooth waves from the oscillates
So you can drive these audio inputs to distortion by pushing them beyond their threshold and because you've got multiple inputs going on here that will make it much easier for the unit to start distorting. Input 5 is significantly hotter than the other inputs and because it has much more gain it will actually drive the, the module into distortion just with one input signal. But otherwise I'm just going to show you these all combined and how they change the character of the sound. And this is from the lowest of the oscillators working up. Because it's DC coupled, the mixer on the Ring SM is also very good for mixing CVs. At the moment I've got a bunch of different things connected into this just to illustrate how you can combine them. And they're both modulating a, the pitch of a VCO and the frequency of, a, of the filter over here simultaneously. And I've got a bit of resonance on there just so that it, it's a bit more audible. So first of all, I've got a sawtooth wave from the dual FO over here going into input 2. So if I raise that. And I've also got the DHADSR connected just so I can use its built in trigger function just to give a like a one shot envelope added into the, the signal. I've got that connected to 3, so if I raise that a little bit. Then, at input 1, I've also got the sample and hold module over here, and that is also being triggered by the square wave from the same LFO, so basically all the, the changes, all the different voltages that, that will be sent from the sample and hold will be basically syncopated with the, the rate of the LFO. So, if I raise 1. I've also got precision voltages here connected to input 4 and that just allows me to shift the, the root voltage of, of all this modulation up or down an octave or by semitones. So to bring all this stuff together, at the moment I'm using four channels of the mixer, so I'm mixing all four of these, these VCOs. If I want to use other elements in conjunction with this, then I've got to decide how I can integrate both the element I want to use. So for instance, I want to use a ring modulator, and what inputs I need to make available so that I can mix other oscillators or whatever in with, with the ring modulator. Now, if I connect things to the X and Y inputs for the ring modulator, they don't cancel out whatever is going into the appropriate channels, which is in this case is 2 and 3. So these are the pots that control the X and Y mix, but they're also associated with inputs 2 and 3. So I can leave inputs 2 and 3 in there, and this will still control the level of those inputs. But 
the signal will also be passed through to the ring modulator. The only limitation will mean that I won't be able to hear the original dry signal of whatever it is that I'm using to feed the ring modulator. So let's say I'm using two triangle waves from, from two VCOs to feed just a, a single carrier and modulator for the ring mod. I won't be able to introduce those to the mix because I'll be gobbling up the input two and three with, uh, so I've got here two square waves. And the two square waves from the same VCOs that I'm going to use for this, this ring mod as well, just to illustrate this. So if I take the triangle output from the first VCO, which I'm going to use as a carrier, connecting it to X, I take the second VCO, the triangle again, and use this as the modulator. So you can still hear all the channels that hasn't interrupted anything because essentially the mixer always takes precedence. It's sort of it's it's got the top priority over over the other functions. But this is still feeding the ring modulator. So if I take the level down of all the four things that I've got in the mixer, including those first two oscillators, the square waves that I'm using for the ring mod. So now you can hear nothing. I haven't got anything plugged into input one, so that frees up the ring modulator level. And at the moment, because I've got both the carrier and the modulator down, you won't hear anything. But as I start to raise the level of these, that is the ring modulated combination of both those first two VCOs. But I can still bring all the elements that I've got connected elsewhere in the mixer, I can still introduce those. So obviously those that aren't connected to two and two and three. So I've got these two oscillators going into um, four and five on the mixer. So I can still mix them in. But also if I take those out just for a bit, I can also bring in the oscillators that I've got in channels two and three. So you can hear those square waves again. They've got a bit of pulse width modulation on them just to sort of make them a little bit more, stand out a little bit more against the other sounds. Take the ring modulator out. There's the square waves. And then the ring modulated result of both the triangle waves from those same two VCOs going through the ring modulator those. So also the X input is used to generate the sub oscillators. So whatever it is that I've got connected into X will determine the pitch of the sub oscillators. But I also have to make sure that if I want to hear these, there's nothing connected into those relevant inputs. So if I just wanted that minus one sub octave, I've got to make sure input four is free. So I'll take, this is a third VCO, I've just disconnected that from input four. And then if I raise the sub minus one control, That is a sub oscillator that's being, or sub octave rubber that's being generated from this carrier VCO over here. And same again, I've got channel five down in the mix at the moment, which is this this last VCO. But if I take that right down and disconnect that from the input, then I can also get the minus two. take out the square waves. So now you're hearing the ring modulator and the sub oscillators. So that's why you've got a lot of flexibility 
in terms of what you can do with the mixer because you're always going to have some inputs free to mixing other audio with either the ring modulator or the sub oscillators or both 